Okay, here is an original effect. I call it the ultimate lie detector, okay? So for this, we actually just need um, somewhere between, let's say 15 and 20 uh, random cards. And these need to be chosen by the spectators. So maybe they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, whoop, 18. Okay, 18 is fine. Any number between uh, 15 and 20 would be just fine. Okay, so we have 18 here, which is great. Now, what you need to do is you need to have the spectator make note of the identity of the bottom card, okay? Which was randomly arrived at, of course, because this is a random selection of cards. So the card for them to remember is the 10 of diamonds. Now, you as the performer wouldn't see this, right? This is just for the spectator to remember. Okay, so you wouldn't know what that is. Now, in the process of doing this crazy lie detection thing, um, I'm going to also demonstrate some really cool shuffles. Uh, this one's called the Klondike. This is where you take the top and bottom off is one, like this. Now, this is kind of a long-winded shuffle, so we can keep doing that or stop wherever you'd like. Stop there. Don't do any more. Okay, that's just fine. And then we're going to deal out into two piles. But they don't have to be equal size. So you could say like left, left, right, right, or whatever you like. You want three lefts? Okay, what about here? Right, left, left, right, 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 left, right. Okay, your choice. That's just fine. And now we need to personalize this effect or this test by inputting your first name, which is Robert. R-O-B-E-R-T, Robert. Okay, very good. We are ready to begin the lie detection phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell out your card is the. So your, Y-O-U-R, card, C-A-R-D, is, I-S, the, T-H-E, okay? And then we'll just kind of gather these up, kind of in a haphazard manner, I guess. And now I need you to tell me the identity of your card with the proviso that you may lie if you choose to. So what card did you see? Three of clubs. Are you sure? Okay, that's very good. So T-H-R-E-E-O-F-C-L-U-B-S, right? Three of clubs, I want to just confirm that. Yep, that's what you claim it is. Okay, so I'm going to spell out your, Y-O-U-R, card, C-A-R-D, is, I-S, the, T-H-E, your card is the Ten of Diamonds. I am oh so sorry, but you have been caught in a lie. Your card was not the Three of Clubs. It was the Ten of Diamonds. And our ultimate lie detection machine is working perfectly. Okay, so how does this work quickly? Okay, so um, you can have anywhere between uh, 15 and 20 cards. That's true. Okay, so you can even add one more if you like. So now we have 19. Okay, so how this works very quickly, the spectator needs to remember the identity of the bottom card without you seeing it as the performer. Now I'll turn it face up so that we can watch the whole thing. And I will add links in the description below to videos that talk about the mathematics behind some of this, what's really driving it, as well as additional applications of the powerful mathematics here, okay? So I'm gonna turn this down. Now you could start right here. Let me point that out. You could just go, your card is the, you know, once you've had them decide whether or not they're gonna lie, and then you click, well, let's go ahead and just do it. Um, but before I did that, I did a little bit of false mixing. So if you want to include this, you can, but just realize that the next three little steps could be omitted. So what I did was I began to do a Klondike shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Now at any point you can stop doing this. The spectator, spectator can say stop, that's enough, and then just drop the rest on top. Well, for the Klondike shuffle, the bottom card is a fixed point, so it hasn't gone anywhere. And then we dealt out into two piles. They can be equal size, different size. Spectator can say right, 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 left, 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 right, left, right, left, or something. Now the key is, the only thing you need to remember, the last card dealt, that pile needs to be set on top because we want this one on top, okay? 
That's the only subtlety you need to remember there. And then you just spell out their first name. Well, even if they only have one letter in their first name, this card's going down first, which is where we need it to be. So I spelled Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, that's fine. Uh, but really any name will do. Now essentially, well not essentially, what has happened is their noted card is back at the bottom, okay? So if you want to skip the Klondike, the left, right, and then the dealing out of their name, you can skip those three. And then you're, so in some sense, we're at the very beginning where they just noted their card. So you can move right into the, your card is the spelling, okay? But I think it's good to ra supposedly randomize it a bit and bring in their first name, just to make it seem a little bit more believable. Okay, and so from there, what I did, so th from this point off, we're performing an off-centered coding. And I'll even point you to a book that not only talks about this principle, but dozens and dozens of other mathematical card principles. Okay, it's a book worth picking up. And I'll have a link in the description below. Okay, so what I did was I said your, Y-O-U-R, card, C-A-R-D, is, I-S, the, T-H-E. Now, it ends up that these can be picked up in any order. Their order here doesn't matter. In fact, you can even do a big a table wash. That might give away too much. So just kind of like randomly pick them up. It doesn't, or have the spectator tell you how to do it. Um, I think it's best though to do it yourself because if you give the spectator the choice to decide for the next stacking phase, um, it does need to be stacked in a certain way. Okay, so maybe just haphazardly stack it yourself, kind of like I did. Drop those on top. That's important. The ones in your hand have to go on top. Now, you ask them for the identity of their card. They can name any of the 52 card names, and we will detect whether or not they've told the truth. Okay, so let's say they lie. They say the ace of spades. Okay, so you just spell out A, C, E, for ace, O, F for of, S, P, A, D, E, S. And then just immediately drop those on top, pick up the larger pile on top, and then the larger pile still on top. Okay, so just stack from right to left. That stacking is required, is essential. But the crazy thing is it doesn't matter what card name you spell. That's the miraculous thing. Okay, and then to finish, you just spell out your card is that. So Y-O-U-R, your a card, C-A-R-D, is I-S, the, T-H-E, and the spectator's card is guaranteed to be the next card. You'll reveal it and detect whether or not the spectator was truthful. And here we can see that they told a lie because their actual card was the three of hearts and they claimed it was the ace of spades. Okay, we'll have, have fun with that and take a look at the links in the description below where you can learn about the principles driving this effect as well as an entire resource for mathematical card magic. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.